What's up, guys? Caught me uh, drinking a Code Red. But, uh, it's Devin back doing a final thoughts video for the Masters. Um, and I'm glad I'm doing this a uh, little bit later. Um, as we've seen, weather could be taking a turn for the worst. And so it's kind of made me uh, change up what I've got going on but so uh, for this video just gonna be talking again through uh, my favorite DraftKings plays um, probably seen the core plays video um, I actually have a correction to that core plays video uh, due to some things that were said at um, some press conferences today so uh, yeah, we're going to go over the DraftKings plays. Um, my bets haven't changed. If you are interested in what bets I've made, they're in the betting show that I released earlier this week. And then i um, going to be going over uh, one and done uh, because I have waited this long to figure out who I'm playing. And uh, I've thought about it really hard. So... <laughs> Yeah, um, so jumping in, I'm not going to go through the custom model again. I'm just going to go through and talk about who I'm liking and uh, who I am playing. So uh, at the top, for me, I'm going to be playing John Rahm. It looks like John Rahm is going to be the lowest owned if we uh, take a look over here on the ownership projections. Um, out of the top three right now, uh, John Rahm is only being uh, used on Fantasy National in 18.7% of lineups uh, compared to Scotty and Rory who are getting 26.6 and 25.6% uh, used um, and then their calculated ownership is a little bit closer um, but I've learned to kind of take this with a grain of salt, I bet these guys are closer to the what they're being used in uh, lineups on Fantasy National rather than this calculated ownership percentage. So I feel good about using Rom. I I think he has a great shot at winning this week. He has a great history here. Um, he's basically done everything but win. Um, so. And with the way the conditions are looking to shake out, I like that he um, has uh, a longer driving distance. He has the all-around game. I just, I like John Rahm. And I am, I am personally, the John Rahm hater. I, uh, I typically, uh, in a sense, bitch about John Rahm and... The way he uh, throws fits sometimes on the course. But yeah, as the John Rahm hater, I'm going to say I am playing John Rahm. I mean, Scotty Scheffler is one of my favorite players on the tour. And could I see him defending it? Yes. Um, but at the ownership, I'm going to make that pivot to Rahm because I think Rahm is right there with him. And... I can see John Rahm winning the green jacket this year, so uh, I will be taking John Rahm in the 10K range. Uh, moving down to the 9K range, uh, you know, so I tossed around the idea of Cam Smith, uh, listening to him in his press conference, you know, saying he doesn't feel like he is in good of, as good as form coming in this year as he was uh, last year. Uh, which is kind of reflective with his finishing positions in live golf. Um, if you take those into account, can he absolutely show up this week? Uh, yeah, yeah, he can. Uh, and 9,800 though, I just like a lot of the guys that are in the lower 9K range. Uh, I probably would rather play Jordan Spieth and Patrick Cantlay over him. So 
Uh, I tossed around the idea of Cam Smith. I even tossed around the idea of betting Cam Smith today because his number on DraftKings fell to 35 to 1. Uh, but I, I restrained myself. I restrained myself. Um, you know, if he comes out and wins, um, he got me. But uh, I just, I don't know. I just don't see it. Um, Jordan Speed, Patrick Cantlay, Justin Thomas, all interesting plays. My biggest thing with Justin Thomas is his putter. Uh, that's why I, you know, someone said to me earlier in the week, uh, hating on Justin Thomas when he's been finishing top 10 and stuff. Yeah, he's been finished top 10 in some events, but he's also been finishing like T41. And uh, he just, uh, until that putter comes back around, I just don't think he's going to be in contention. That's just me. You can play what you want. You can take what I say with a grain of salt. Um, so yeah, I'm just, uh, going to pass on Justin Thomas, Jordan Spieth, and we know what he does around Augusta. Um, uh, I could absolutely see playing him, but uh, I'm just passing. And I guess I'm solely just off of Cantlay based off of his major performance. Uh, I could see him doing well. I mean, I could see a lot of these guys doing well in this field. But with weather and things like that, it's kind of switched me on to guys that have good distance um, and decent approach play. So, yeah, I, I like Max Home a lot. I like where his ownership is. Uh, he is, him and Cam Smith are like the lowest owned in the 9K range. And Max Homa's course history is his big knock. Max Homa, you know, his last few times around here, not the player he was, uh, that he is now, that he was then. He has elevated himself so much over the last year. Uh, so I trust in Max Homa. Max Homa probably is my favorite player. And I love watching him. I, I love following him on social media. Uh, so, yeah, I'm playing him. And if I regret it, I regret it. But, like I said, I like to pivot a lot um, and get away f from chalk that I could see getting away from. Now, if I think there's chalk that I should eat, I'm going to eat it. So, yeah, uh, I'm all over Max Homa. Uh, I'm a little bit lighter on Colin Morikawa just because of the distance factor, but he seems to just get it done in majors, and I could see him at the top of the leaderboard on Sunday, so I will be sprinkling Colin Morikawa, but he's not going to be like my heaviest uh, play. Uh, I really like Xander Schauffele. Uh He has a great track record around here. Uh, I, I like them in the possible conditions that we have coming. So I'm very high on Xander Schauffele. Tony Finau is another person that I really like. Uh, can play well in this bad weather. Has a great track record around here. Uh, he is just like a around top 20 machine recently. And I'm hoping maybe get back to a course where he performs well. Uh, hopefully he doesn't like dislocate his ankle like he did a couple of years ago and have to pop it back in place in a practice round. Uh, but even if he does, I mean, he still had a great finish that year when he did it. So uh, maybe it's good luck. Maybe Tony should dislocate his ankle and pop it back in place and uh, maybe he'll have a great week. So I like Tony Fina a lot. Uh, no problem playing J uh, Dustin Johnson, Jason Day. Cam Young, Victor Hovland, Hideki Matsuyama, all guys I could see having success around here. Um, just not guys I'm getting to a lot, but absolutely no problem playing them. I mean, uh, I could see any of these guys, um, you know, at the top of the leaderboard on Sunday. Uh, you know, we know Dustin has, can get it done. He's won here. November Masters, though, if, you know, that matters but uh Hideki has won here uh Victor Hovland hasn't had like an elite performance here but he hasn't missed a cut and he's always been like above 35th place so uh, no problems there uh I'm staying away from Sam Burns 
might just be hyped up after the match play. Um, doesn't really get it done in majors, so I will pass on Sam Burns. Now, where I'm making that switch from my core plays was I said I was going to be playing Zal Torres. Um, he's lower owned than uh, he's lower owned than I was expecting based on his performances here the last two years at the Masters, um, a T6 and a second place finish. But I read today him talking about switching up his putting grip. And I just don't feel like it's a good idea to be doing that this week. Um, so that kind of worries me. So I'm pivoting off of <laughs> using him as a core play. Um, I have a bad in on him. Can't really take it back. Um, so, oh, well, um, I thought about using him in one and done. And then, yeah, I read those things today about him, uh, saying he's going to switch the putter grip and how he's lost some weight, uh, because he had a stomach bug at the match play. That's why he withdrew, uh, lost some weight and hasn't been able to get it back. So who knows? Um, it looked good in the beginning of the week, but when he said he was... The main thing for me is him switching his putting grip. Uh, considering he already uh, is not a good putter. I mean, yeah, could it make a big change for him? Yeah. Uh, the first week he does it? I don't know. So, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to take him out as a core play. And uh, I'm going to eat the chalk here. And I'm going to stay with a guy in that same salary range. And uh, I'm going to go with Sung JM as my third core play now. So uh, John Rahm, Max Homa, and Sung JM are my core plays now. Uh, Sung Jae is going to be highly owned. Uh, he's great in difficult conditions uh, with wind, rain, difficult courses. Has a great track record here. Uh, been playing great. So, yeah, uh, I'm eating the chalk with Sung Jae now. He was, I liked Sung Jae, but I was going to pivot with Will Zell Torres in the beginning of the week. And now that I hear that about the putting grip, I'm going to, I'm just going to go with Sung Jae and just eat the chalk there. Um, Matthew Fitzpatrick said today that the neck injury has definitely caused a lot of problems for his swing. He's still feeling the effects of it, and it's still not 100%, and we've seen that, so stay away from him. Tyrrell Hatton has uh, not done good here, um, so pass. Uh, I could see Shane Lowry, uh, you know, in these diff difficult weather conditions, difficult course. Um, you've seen him finish third here last year. Could absolutely see him uh, get it done. Problem with the way I'm building right now is I'm not getting to this 7K range a lot. So a lot of these guys I could see being great plays uh, like Shane Lowry, Justin Rose, Tommy Fleetwood, uh, Corey Connors. Corey Connors is going to be huge chalk. Uh, Minwoo Lee. I could see uh, Sahith being a good play. Abraham Answer, Siwoo. There's a lot of guys in the 7K range that I could see doing great, uh, like doing great this week. But the way I'm building, I'm just not getting to the 7K range a lot. Um, so there are guys in this range that I like. I just not getting to them. Um, just the way I'm building this week, and I and I'm sticking with the way I'm building. I'm not changing it now this late in the week. I think we pretty much got what we need uh, to know with the weather, with the course conditions. Um, you know the changes to the course what's going to be beneficial here so i'm sticking with the way i'm building and uh yeah i'm just not getting to the 7k range of course you got tiger woods um would love to see tiger do great worry about him making the cut and getting into the colder weather on saturday and in the wind and in the rain that worries me so yeah uh not getting there um and, you know, you got a lot of the live guys in this range. Brooks won last week. Um, you had Louie, who's, you know, in the past contended at a lot of majors. You had Mito contend at the uh, PGA and should have won it. 
if it wasn't for that crazy shot that he had on 18. Um, so, yeah, uh, it's just a lot of good guys in this range. I could see Kitayama doing good. I could see Chris Kirk doing good. Russell Hanley has a decent course history here. Uh, you got Sergio Garcia, former winner. So, and Patrick Reed. Patrick Reed's in this range too, right? Yeah, Patrick Reed, former winner. So, uh, you know, there's a lot of past champions in here. Uh, you know, Adam Scott as well. I'm just not getting to the 7K range, and that's just how I'm going about that. Uh, 6K range. There's a lot of guys that I like in the 6K range, uh, surprisingly. And with this being a smaller field and uh, top 50 and ties making the cut, so more than half the field making it, I'm more willing to take the risk to dip down here this week because um, you're going to see guys that are down here that make the cut. Now you can cut out probably like, you know, Sandy Lyle, Mike Weir, VJ Singh, whoever Ben Carr is, Bernhard Langer, Larry Mize, um, all these, you know, older gentlemen, uh, you know, you probably cut those guys out. Most of these amateurs you can cut out, uh, you know, Kevin Kisner more than likely. So you're already getting like 10 to 15 guys that are going to miss the cut there. Um, it's just, uh, you know, who else is going to miss the cut here. So um, in the 6K range, you know, I do like Gooch. I think he's one of the live guys that still uh, wants to play, wants to do good. He's had good results in the live tournaments. Uh, you know, uh, t like twelfths, things like that. He's typically, oh, excuse me, I don't know why every time I get on here I want to start yawning. Um, yes, it's a smaller field, but you know, finishing fifteen and above, uh, pretty much like every event is pretty good still. Um, so yeah, interesting Gooch, um, Cam Champ, the the course history. Um, Cam Champ is a guy I'm playing this week. I like that he bombs it. He missed the cut on the number last week, and he really missed the cut. He would have been, he would have been fine, and he would have been ahead of the cut by like two, three strokes. Uh, but um, like the seventeenth hole, he quadruple bogeyed. He quadruple bogeyed, and then he eagled eighteen, and missed the cut on the number. So, you know, if he didn't, if he would have just bogeyed the 17th, if he would have just parred it, he would have been strokes clear of the cut line. So, um, and, you know, he bombs it. He has the great course history here. He just shows up here. Um, I think if the weather's nasty and, you know, distance is a real advantage. And I like Cam Champ. I, I'm playing him. I'm playing the shit out of Cam Champ. So. Um, and you know what, if he misses the cut, he misses the cut, but, um, I could, Danny Willett, past champion, uh, kind of in great form, good form, not great, good form, um, could see playing him at 6,600, uh, Kevin Now was a guy I was looking at, but, uh, I think, uh, now I'm just, eh, on him. Uh, Harold Varner, another guy I could see, you know, getting up and wanting to show, you know, these guys that we can still compete. So I like him. Uh, Adam Svensson's been playing well. Like him. Uh, probably not getting to him. I like Seb Straka. Uh, his approach play is pretty good, uh, especially recently. So I could see him getting it done at 6,300. Uh, and <laughs> the only thing that sucks is we don't really have like an ownership projection for uh, Gordon Sargent, the sophomore at Vanderbilt, uh, getting the special invitation here to the Masters. Uh, he's at 6,100. He played practice rounds today uh, or yesterday. I think it was today uh because yeah max home i had the press conference today so i think it was today max home was talk to, uh, talking about him a lot in his press conference um he was out driving justin thomas and max homo by 15 20 yards 
he some of the clubs he was having into uh he he took driver on every hole except for two he was having just it was just from what it sounds like it was insane it sounds like this kid is the hype um another little nugget i heard uh on the first cut podcast say uh kyle porter said data golf um and i i don't know if this is actually i can't remember if he said this is really what it is but he's ranked as the 90th golfer in the world um but you know what let's go take a look at it real quick let's see if this is actually uh true or not but he was talking about how either data golf has him as the 90th ranked player in the world or he actually is the 90th ranked player in the world in the owgr um yeah no so it, data golf has him as the 90th ranked player in the world uh currently which is pretty big um they're saying that like for his age and everything he is pro- if if not just as good better than guys like justin thomas and jordan spieth when they were at his age um so and the fact that he can drive the ball that far um uh, especially like what uh, the way i'm looking at it um you know distance is going to be our friend with the weather and the way this you know the course is playing i could see you know i looked back to see like how often amateurs are making it um and over like the past like six seven years only two or three amateurs have made the cut but man they're making it sound like this guy is is the real deal so um and it sounded like he impressed a lot of the pros in the practice rounds and i'm building a little crazy i'm using him at 6100 his salary allows me to get uh some pretty nasty lineups if i pair him and cam champ at the bottom and uh it's a risk i'm willing to take so let's go gordon Sargent and cam champ uh, if they make the cut and i can get the you know the other four guys in the lineup to make the cut and be at the top of the leaderboard whew, could be a good week so uh, you know with how much he's getting talked up now and probably tomorrow and not being able to see where his ownership projection is it's a good chance he's owned pretty good but uh hopefully not i'm gonna take the chance i'm gonna take the chance if he's getting talked up that well and he's got the pro players are are wowed by him and i'll take the chance i know it's probably unlikely but hey i'm trying to win a million dollars uh i'm not playing for 20 i'm playing for a million so (laughs) i'll be playing gordon Sargent. so yeah that uh that'll do it for what i'm looking at on DraftKings. um Bets wise, I have bets in on John Rahm, uh, John Rahm, Colin Morikawa, Xander Schauffele, Tony Finau, and Will Zell Torres. Um, not too happy about that Will Zell Torres one now, but still happy with the other four I placed. Um, Colin Morikawa is kind of iffy to me now, but uh, really stoked with the number on that I got on John Rahm. I boosted him on DraftKings. Happy with the number I got Xander at. Happy with the number I got Tony Finau at. So, uh, feel pretty good about the bets. Hopefully, we can get another one this week. Uh, as far as one and done, I thought about using a live guy. But, I'm just, I'm not willing to take the risk. Um, I thought I was going to use a live guy to kind of save some of the better players that I still have um, available to me in my one and done. Considering this isn't an elevated event, this is probably going to be the ninth uh, largest purse this year behind the elevated events or the 10th, um, ninth or 10th highest purse. They haven't announced what it's going to be yet. Um, So... I was going to use Will Zaltoris, and I heard all the things about what he said, and I'm like, yeah, I'll save him for somewhere else, I guess. Um, I'm going to go with Xander Shoffley. I wanted to hold Xander Shoffley um, for, like, 
later in the year. Um, but I just think, you know, he's going to be in the top 10. And honestly, I'll take a top 10. <laughs> I'm 23rd in my one and done with a missed cut last week out of uh, Ryan Fox. I only moved down five spots. I'm 23rd in the run and done uh, league that started in September. So I think I'm just going to go with a safe guy. Um, and I still have guys like Max Homa, Colin Morikawa. I also have Will Zaltoris. Uh, I have Tyrrell Hatton, Shane Lowry. Uh, so I still have guys at the top of the leaderboard. It, it really helped. Uh, 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 where did Roy finish second? Was it API? Or was it? I think it was API. So I got a second place finish out of Rory at an elevated event. I got Scotty at the players winning. And then I had Cam Young at the elevated match play getting second. So I moved tremendously up. I think I was like in the 250s. I'm now, at, before last week I was 18th after the missed cut. I should have just played Kuchar. I should have just played safe. Um, the 500,000 from Kuchar would have probably left me at 18th or 19th i probably would have fell maybe one spot so only falling five spots with a missed cut um, i'm fine with that and i didn't use like i didn't use siwoo kim i didn't use tyrell hatton i didn't i, di I couldn't use cory connor's I already used cory connor um but yeah i just um i still got some bullet uh, good bullets uh i feel good with what i have left moving forward Probably going to use Colin Morikawa next week at RBC Heritage. Him or Tyrrell Hatton. Possibly even Shane Lowry. Um, so I still got some good guys to use. So I'm going to use Xander this week. Hopefully get a top 10 out of him. And, uh, you know, get some money out of him. So it would be uh, unfortunate if I didn't make any money this week. Considering that there's so many people that are going to make the cut. So that'll do it for the um, final thoughts. Last look at DraftKings, um, my one-and-done selection. That's what I got for this week. Um, I'm leaning heavy on driving distance now. Driving distance and good approach play uh, with decent around the green play. Um, guys that have good course history here. So those are like the things I'm looking at when I'm putting my lineups together. And uh, maybe next week uh, I have a million dollars in my pocket, but probably not. I mean, let's be real. That's that's pretty unrealistic. So, yeah, that's what I got this week. Hopefully all the content helped you out. I'm glad I did like a lot final thoughts video because I can uh, say I'm switching my Wills Altoris core play pick to Sung JM um, for a good reason, not just out of nowhere. So, yeah, that's what I got. Good luck, everybody. If any of the content helped you out this week, um, leave a like, subscribe, getting close to the 50 subscribers to do the giveaway. Uh, leave a comment, tell me uh, I'm an idiot. Uh, you know, someone got me for my Justin Thomas take. Hey, all criticism is allowed. All these opinions and all these thoughts are my own. Um, just talking through my process. So, any comments you leave, whether it's good, bad, calling me an idiot, thinking I had a good call, I'll, I'll take it all. I like reading it all, and I comment back to all of it. So good luck this week. If it's not me winning a million, hopefully it's one of you guys winning a million. And uh, let's make some money this weekend. And happy Masters Week, one of the best weeks of the year. I'll see you guys next week for the RBC Heritage Good luck, everybody.